An Oasis is Oasis is, is, is reunion. Is it Oasis reunion or a, Oasis is reunion? I mean, it would be S apostrophe, right? So, but do you say Oasis is? Or do you say the Oasis reunion and that clarifies it? I don't know. It's sold out in less than a day. I think it's sold out probably even in hours. Uh, the dynamic pricing thing was there, despite that. The ticketing system, errors causing frustration among fans, but many got their tickets even if it was at inflated prices. But could we see the Gallagher brothers on stage for a bonus gig at Wembley later this month? Here's what happened, right? Turkey, a guy, I don't know if you know this guy, the man behind the uh, Saudi sporting uh, revolution, a guy called Turkey Al Ashika. Uh, he spoke to Talk Sport a little earlier and He's going to try and convince Noel to play alongside Liam. So Liam's already booked as a solo act for the fight between Anthony Joshua and Daniel Dubois later this month. So Liam's there, already pre-booked, probably paid a squillion quid for the privilege. And so the promoter is going, I, I want to try and get Noel in there as well, get Noel to play. Wouldn't that be something? Well... I mean, it would, because the exclusivity of the tour next year would be slightly reduced somewhat. Let's speak to Dave Mason, uh, crisis consultant and musical journalist, music journalist. Dave, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Ian. It's uh, really good to be talking to you again. Uh, indeed. Week. Nice to have you back with us. Listen, I mean, I'm a bit sceptical about this. I, would ima I can't imagine the Oasis, uh, the, the uh, Gallagher brothers are going to suddenly go, oh, we got tricked into performing together and didn't realise it. So I would imagine that Noel will say, uh, no, I'm not doing that, um, and that's the end of it. But this guy apparently would quite like it to happen. Is it possible? Well, anything is possible. Um, as you can tell, I'm double-hatting today. Normally I talk to you in a crisis communication capacity yep. about corporate debacles, and this has all of it, <laughs> uh, as well as the rock and roll angle. Hence, I've put a T-shirt on today instead of a nice shirt. <laughs> Uh, however, I'm happy to say that I wasn't one of the people on Saturday that um, queued online for four to eight hours. More on that in a moment. Um, I think just from the rock and roll aspect of things and me having um, had a, a little dip into that world, not, not as a musician myself, but as a music yeah. journalist over the last 30 years, there isn't the rehearsal time. Everything is about next year and not wanting to take away the exclusivity. I agree with your point a moment ago about that. Uh, and I can't see that with a, a rush yes. of doing that, that's going to take away the impetus and the weight and the build-up um, into next year. So, personally, I can't see that happening within a few weeks, no matter how much money is thrown at it. On another point, I wouldn't mind betting that what the Gallaghers do do in response to... Um, this business of people not being able to get tickets and the Wembley run that they're doing. They added more dates last week. Watch this. But I, I said two things last week, and I, and I was on with your colleague Jeremy last week, and I said they're supposed to be um, a, a band of the people, a working-class band from Burnage in Manchester, and I said it'll be interesting to see um, how much of a band of the people they are in a cost of living crisis when the ticket prices come out at the end of this week. And yes. what did we see? We saw this, frankly, outrageous... Um, it's extraordinary, wasn't it? Can't tell. It, yeah. it, it, and, and, I, and, and I will qualify that point in a moment, that it's an, it's an outrageous cartel um, that this system can still occur that dynamically prices and takes people into a world where they're paying many, many hundreds of pounds. Yep. Frankly, you could take a family of four in the half-term holiday break, which isn't cheap, away abroad for the sorts of ticket prices we were talking about on the weekend. That's so a great that, point, yeah. Is that a working-class band of the people? I put it to you. I, I wondered that because, the, yeah, I, I mean, we've, we've had a lot of discussion this afternoon about, you know, who controls the, the surge pricing thing. Um, I read a few things at the weekend that said the band ultimately can control that. Well, the, that would be the management rather than the band, but nonetheless. And then I heard other people go, no, 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 it's the Ticketmaster. They're more powerful than the artists these days, so it's that's their system and that's how it works. But surely, yeah. if you are Oasis, you can go, right, it's 100 quid a ticket, it's never going to be more than 100 quid a ticket, that's what everybody pays, end of. You could stipulate well, that, I would have thought. Two, two organisations, two brands are put into the frame for this. Let's just put go from the rock and roll hat to my crisis communication consultancy hat here. 
Oasis are in the frame for not really getting out in front of this and having a bit of a plan for the demand. Um, a moment ago, I mentioned the fact that uh, the Wembley dates last week that were added, yeah. those are... I reckon in the next week or two, we will see them adding more dates at Wembley so that they can say, uh, we, we beat um, Nebworth, we, we've beaten uh, Taylor Swift. They'll want to outdo Taylor Swift's run of eight concerts there and have a record-breaking 10. So I reckon they'll do that. Um, and there's talk that Nebworth are asking them to reprise their 30th anniversary 1996 wow. Nebworth concert for 2025 20, 26 so look out for potentially um nebworth dates uh for the year after next which again will keep yeah. that on a roll that's if they haven't beaten each other up and chucked guitars at each other before then well that's very true yes because there were people joking weren't there that you know the gig might not happen at all because oh, they had a, another fight by then now there was people in the queue right with thousands of people ahead of them and there was a meme going around saying while you've been waiting to buy your ticket the gallagher's are split up did you see that? One, I did see that. Yeah, that's right. That's great, isn't it? <laughs> I love that. Did, um, well, so I'm, I'm, go, on, go on, Dave. Sorry. How much time have we got? <laughs> go on, keep going. No, um, my colleague Candy, um, who I work with, uh, was on was talking to me this morning. She was three hundred and sixty thousandth in the queue. Ah. She waited eight hours on Saturday. The first advertised price was one hundred and forty to one hundred and fifty quid. When she got to it, it was three hundred and forty three pound per ticket. And then she was chucked out oh. by the algorithm and told she couldn't book. It either thought she was a bot, which was going on, um, or it was asking her to, to go in the general admission bit and book stands, and then it would say tickets are unavailable. It was a mess. So here's one man who's got it right, Paul Heaton from the beautiful South. Yep. He's put out a thing saying, I do not want people to... And he could fill an arena. He did Glastonbury this year, as you know, Norman Cook joining him on stage there. He said, I, I won't put my tickets beyond £35 a ticket. He decided that, and um, that's where that's where those, those ticket prices are staying, because he said, I want people to be able to afford a drink. But here's the real the real bit that, that is outrageous. Guess who owns Ticketmaster? Ticketmaster are blaming the band and the promoter. Yeah. The promoter for this concert is Live Nation. Live Nation owns Ticketmaster. There it is. Tick they are a wholly owned subsidiary of Live Nation. So how and why are they blaming their own parent company? <laughs> let's get a statement from them. Come on, let's get them on. This is outrageous. Let's fight, yeah. I mean, talk about crisis management. That needs, that's a crisis. It needs explaining. But maybe, I did think, you know, when we were talking about this and uh, knowing you were coming on, Dave, I did think... You know, maybe they just don't care. You know, it's, it's, it's all publicity in a curious way. And, you know, people aren't going to... When there's an, another... You know, the, when the Rolling Stones play Wembley next year or whenever they are, uh, no-one's going to go, oh, I'm not going to do it via Ticketmaster because of that debacle with Oasis. People will just go back to them, won't they? Yes, because what we have in this country now is a system where, you know, people, 30 years ago, people would queue for HMV. Yeah. And, and and you remember those Nebworth tickets for um I, here's a thing for you it's not a test but let's just see if you can guess when in 1996 um the Nebworth Oasis tickets went on sale guess how much they were for the concert in May 96 oh, just you, guess. you're going to tell me it's something like Go 50 on. quid or something that's double what they were wow they were 22 pounds for for Nebworth at the height of their fame that's the point, isn't it, Ian? The height of their fame, 1995, 96, you'd have queued up outside your local ticket agent, which yep. are more. So this is a monopoly, and Lisa and Andy and the government are right, perhaps, to look at this stuff in the round. But the wider argument here, of course, is if you then do it for concert ticket pricing, then are you going to do it for hotels? Because there's dynamic pricing airlines, there's dynamic pricing when you're booking um hotels as people found out to their cost trying to book hotels in manchester and then finding that those would would cancel their bookings last week yeah. and put them up for three times the amount the problem <laughs> is we'll have short memories when these crises occur and we move on and next year people will all forget about it and we'll all be excited about oasis again yeah um, and i'm afraid often often these these crises do do blow over but i i hope that people keep shouting about it and that actually maybe there is agreed investigation by Lisa and Andy to see there's got to be a fairer way of doing ticketing in a world where 
we, we can send spaceships outside of our own. Yeah, so, and, and you're not going to charge somebody five, six hundred quid to just see a band, for goodness sake. I mean, look, I know capitalism, um, uh, supply and demand, all of that plays a part. We've been asking this afternoon, Dave. Uh, you know, we know that the market decides. But of course. This, you know, but, but to what degree is that fair to fans? Yep. Hard earned working money. It's 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 just not a reasonable amount. Uh, absolutely of money. right. I've got to ask while you're with us, Dave, because we've been asking this afternoon. You know, who, what yeah. what is your upper limit to see who? Who would you who would you pay big bucks oh. to go and see live? Right. Okay. I, I answer that straight away. I was happy to pay a couple of hundred quid, just under a couple of hundred quid, eight years ago to see the rumours lineup of Fleetwood Mac. Lindsay Buckingham and Stevie there in Birmingham at the NEC. I would give you because it can't happen now because dear Christine died nearly two years ago. Yeah. I would pay five hundred quid plus per ticket for that now. I reckon I would pay that. Do you now. know what? Can I just tell you a story about that? Because that was Ad amazing. Ad Adam, our producer, yeah, which was how long ago was it? Adam, this happened. So five years. So probably part of the same tour. Um, Adam's, you know, from Australia, and obviously, not that that's necessarily relevant, but he, he, he had a choice to go to see the Spice Girls, this is about five years ago, or Fleetwood Mac. And uh, please, please, no. What? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It, no, he did, Dave. He went la, to la, see... La, 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 yeah, la, la. I know. He went to see the Spice Girl. <laughs> and, of course, you can never now, because of Chrissy McVie, you can never see uh, Fleetwood Mac again in that form. Uh, one of the finest bands ever, a great sort of Anglo-American combination of such amazing music. And I would, you know, if you're ever bored, check out some YouTube live stuff of Fleetwood Mac. It is just... Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, Lindsay Buckingham's live version of... Um, Big love. Big love. I mean, yeah, exactly. Can you imagine seeing that on a live stage? And Adam was watching, uh, I'll tell you what you want, what you really, really want, you know, over there yeah, at... Uh, where, where does Adam it? want some reputation management help at all? He need, yeah, he was spicing up yeah. his life. That's what he was doing. Yeah, living yeah. his best spice life. Bim. Well, you know, each to their own. <laughs> each to their own. Yeah, I get it. I love it. Dave, you've been brilliant as ever. Thank you. Great to have you on again. Dave Mason, crisis consultant. Our music journalist with us on the programme.